This is the head-to-head -head binocular harness test. Nine harnesses, six tests, and a bunch of hunts. I'm Zach Harold, and you're watching a Rockslide Gear Review. Let's get into it. Thank you to TNK, Sidka, Stone Glacier, Alaska Guide Creations, FHF Gear, Outdoor Vision, ADAC, Badlands, and Marsupial for supplying all of these harnesses. All of you companies made this test possible. On a hunt or other outdoor activities, you may find yourself doing more than just walking. The purpose of this test coming up is to see how much movement each harness has while jogging. Let's be honest, bending over with a harness on is inevitable and it is extremely frustrating when you bend over and the harness is just flopping around all over. So the purpose of this test is to see how close each harness stays to my body while I'm bent over. Whether it be climbing over logs, jumping over sagebrush, or going down small drop-offs, sometimes jumping is inevitable. The purpose of this test is to see how much movement each one of these harnesses has up and down and side to side while jumping. There are a lot of activities on a hunt that can get debris on the inside of your harness. Whether it be crawling, blowing snow, blowing dust, riding on a side by side, or some other activity. The purpose of this test is to see how much debris get on the inside of these harnesses after crawling through snow, mud, dust, weeds, and other vegetation. When I was crawling, this lid came open, and that's where the mud on the binoculars came from. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of debris inside the bag itself. <clears throat> Sitka harness got a little bit of snow in it, but there's no other debris in there. No debris on the inside. No debris. Gear, tiny bit of snow got in. Um, but really no other debris other than snow down at the bottom. No snow or debris.
there's no debris. You can see that the rangefinder pouch came wide open and is full of dirt and debris, but the top binocular pouch <clears throat> did just fine. There's not any dirt or debris in there. There's no debris on the inside. Uh, Stone Glacier, the edges are wet. Um, I would assume it's coming in this gap right here. And it's uh, got quite a bit of water in there. Uh, but the water did not soak through the face of the harness, which is super impressive. Last guide creations. Completely dry. Very impressive for no rain cover. HF gear is a little bit damp here on the sides, right here and right here. But other than that, it is completely dry and there's no water pooled inside of the harness. Um, oddly enough, the harness or the, the rain fly actually had a bunch of water on the inside of it. The water is running behind the harness into the bottom of the rain cover because my toilet paper is still dry but from the bottom of the rain cover it is seeping in either in the back or from the bottom and filling the harness with water. The ADAC is completely soaked through. <laughs> and filled with water. The water actually soaked through the face of the ADAC as well. You can see here on the inside it's wet. Assume that's because the water is going down 
between my body and the harness and going in the bottom of the rain fly. Um, the top of the bag is completely dry. Toilet paper is completely dry. And the binoculars in the pouch is completely dry. I would imagine, yep. Yeah, um, and the rate finder pouch is uh, a little bit wet. So because that water was pooling at the bottom of the rain fly, that would be why the rain fly pouch is a little bit wet. Open that up, the toilet paper was completely dry. The bottom of the bag did get wet though. Not a lot, you probably, I don't know if you can see in there or not. It's not very wet, but it did get a little wet. So. What it looks like happened, the water ran down the face of the vinyl harness and when it got to the bottom, that's where it soaked through. Because the face itself right here did not soak through at all. The TNK harness feels like the most durable harness in the group purely based off the material. I appreciate the single hand operation and the ease of taking the binoculars in and out. I appreciated that the lid magnetizes open, but I found myself trying to locate the magnet to hold the lid open farther down the main bag, so I think it would be more intuitive to have the magnet lower. The zipper pocket in the back worked excellent for holding licenses. The rangefinder pouch and admin pouch hook very securely to the harness, and I appreciated the organization inside the admin pouch. The auto lock clips made it difficult to tighten the harness straps and for a small torso, the sewn in padding made it impossible to adjust the straps over the shoulders small enough. Overall, I enjoyed putting it to the test. The Sitka Mountain Harness was the most secure harness I tested. I think this is due to the X cross the harness straps make and the extra belly band strap. The side pouches holds range finders or other items you need safe and secure. I think the main downfall of the harness is there's only one size offered, but the two latching points on the front of the harness is designed to mitigate this problem. I appreciated the way the lid has a spot to bend and magnetizes open, which made removing and replacing the binoculars effortless. The zipper pouch on the back of the harness was beneficial and the stretch pockets on the front of the pouches and sides of the main pouch held items like wind check and elk calls securely. It would be nice to have it be full enclosure to keep snow and debris out, but even with it being open on the sides, I didn't have much stuff get inside it. An added bonus the harness offers is an included lens cloth that came in handy on multiple hunts. The way that the binoculars tether connects to the harness itself works excellent and allowed it to move freely every time I was glassing for animals. The Stone Glacier Skyline harness is one of the most minimal harnesses tested. It is uniquely designed with Velcro and can be adjusted to perfectly fit your binoculars. I appreciated the pocket on the back of the harness, but wish it would have had a zipper closure to ensure items I put in it would be secure. The bungee pockets on the side of the harness were an added benefit and came in handy for things like elk calls or wind check. The molly webbing on the bottom allows for attaching things such as the bear spray holster. The lid is forward opening and even though it is supposed to be a one hand operation to open and close it, I had troubles getting it to close completely more than once because the lid would hit the straps going over my shoulders. The rangefinder pouch offers the same velcro adjustment as the main bag, but I found removing and replacing my rangefinder somewhat difficult. The stone glacier and I went on a lot of hunts and I appreciated that it held my binoculars securely and how low profile it is. The Alaskan Guide Creation Ravis was one of the largest harnesses I tested. It offers a bunch of connection points and options for customization. I appreciated the forward opening lid, but sometimes had issues getting it completely closed because the lid would hit the harness clips. The zipper pocket in the back was beneficial for holding my licenses and the pockets on the side held my wind checker securely. The auto lock clips made it difficult to tighten the harness and I noticed for a small torso, the sewn in padding makes it impossible to adjust the straps over the shoulders small enough. The rangefinder pouch connected securely to the harness and held my rangefinder well. All in all, when using the harness throughout hunting season, I appreciated how easy it was to remove and replace my optics. The FHF gear was low profile, compact and comfortable. I appreciated the structure to the main bag and it made it easier to remove and replace my binoculars. 
The small side pockets were great for calls and held the supplied wind checker bottles securely. The pocket on the back worked excellent for holding my tags and the tuck closure system gave me confidence that what I put in there would not fall out. The zipper pocket on the front was great for SD cards, licenses, or other small items. The lid is rear opening and even though it is not completely enclosed, I did not have many issues with the breeze getting inside it. The harness straps were comfortable. I found that due to where the buckles were sewn onto the straps, it made it impossible to tighten them any further. The rangefinder pouch offered the same opening system as the main bag. When the hunts were over, the FHF harness handled every adventure I took it on. The outdoor vision is low profile, compact, and comfortable. I appreciate the side pockets for wind check and calls and the front zip pocket for holding my licenses. It does have a pocket on the back, but without a closure system on it, I was hesitant to put anything in it. The lid is unique in that when it shuts, it completely encloses the eye cups of the binoculars, then magnetizes shut with three magnets. This design kept all the breeze and snow out, was easy to open with one hand, magnetizes open, but sometimes the lid hit the eye cups of the binoculars when I was trying to close it. The harness straps themselves are comfortable. Another unique feature of this harness is the included rain cover that is located at the bottom of the harness. The rangefinder pouch worked well securing my rangefinder and is a magnetic closure as well. The outdoor vision did its job and protected my binoculars on every hunt I took it on. The ADAC was one of the most minimal harnesses that I tested. Even though it was a minimal harness, it did not sacrifice on comfort. I appreciated the stretch pockets on the front of the harness, but found that they aren't quite deep enough as I had multiple items fall out of them. The lid is a forward opening lid and opens one handed no problem, but I did have some issues getting it completely closed. To mitigate this, I either had to hook the back of the harness with my thumb so it wouldn't move or have the harness lid looser than I wanted. As for the rangefinder pouch, I never had my rangefinder fall out but I feel that the lid never truly closes because there isn't anything for it to hook on like the main lid has. The way that the rangefinder pouch connects to the harness was well thought out, very effective, yet still simple. I appreciated the smaller size straps on the harness itself and found it quite easy to adjust, which made the harness comfortable for the hunts that I took it on. The Badlands XR was one of the largest harnesses tested. I appreciated the lid design, its folding points, and the magnet placement as it made opening and closing the harness effortless. I did find that removing the binoculars was a breeze, but sometimes when placing them back in the harness, the barrels of the binoculars would hit the side of the main bag due to the way the sides curve in. I appreciated the mesh pockets on the interior of the main bag and utilized the included lens cloth frequently. Having the binocular straps connected on the interior of the main bag was beneficial for keeping them out of the way, but I would appreciate a different connection system than the circle clips that are currently on them. The side pockets were a good size for wind check and calls and the zipper closure was effortless to open and close. The rangefinder pouch is at the bottom of the main bag itself. I appreciated not having added bags on the harness for a rangefinder, but found that the downward opening lid would open if I was crawling or if I had jumped off a small ledge, over sagebrush, etc. There is a large slide in pocket on the back of the harness that is big enough for a cell phone, but I would prefer for it to have some type of closure system. The harness straps themselves are comfortable. There is a built in rain cover that can be accessed from a zipper on the back of the harness. The Badlands survived the tests I put it through and the hunts I took it on and held my binoculars securely. The marsupial was compact and comfortable. The forward opening lid was simple to open one handed and it was nice that it magnetized open to keep out of the way. The harness is fully enclosed and I didn't have any issues with the breeze or snow getting inside. I appreciated the front zipper pouch. The side pockets were deep enough that I could put things like wind check in them without it falling out. It offers a backslide pocket, but due to it not having a closure, I didn't use it much. There's molly webbing on the bottom of the harness to offer connection points for some of the other items that Marsupial offers. The harness straps themselves are comfortable, but due to the straps being sewn directly into the padding, the harness can only be adjusted to that point. The binoculars were easy to remove and replace in the main bag and the binocular straps were intuitive. The rangefinder pouch is also a magnetic closure system and did a good job holding my rangefinder securely. The marsupial and I covered a lot of country and I always had peace of mind that my binoculars were safe and secure.
for the most minimal harness, check out the Stone Glacier Skyline and the ADAC. For a compact harness with a good amount of functionality, check out the Outdoor Vision Ridge Top 2.0, Marsupial Enclosed, FHF Gear Pro-M, or the TNK Gen 2. For a harness that is very functional but doesn't offer a ton of customization, look into the Badlands XR or the Sitka Mountain Harness. For a large harness with lots of pockets, connection points, and customization, check out the Alaska Guide Creation Ravis. The aspects that are most important to me on a binocular harness are that it stays secure on my chest, the weight remains on my shoulders, it is easy to open and close one-handed, and removing and replacing the binoculars is effortless. For me, my hunting style, my torso length, and the position that I prefer to have my harness on, the Sidka gear, the FHF gear, and the marsupial rose to the top. Each one of these bino harnesses offered enough features, stayed secure on my body, and supplemented each one of my hunts. Again, thanks to all these companies for sending gear for this review. Be sure to head on over and check them out. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next gear review.